People have been looking at clouds since people have been people. Those billowing shapes might have been our first art or the characters in our first stories. And we still love to pick out shapes like bears, fish, flying saucers, faces, elephants. Some clouds even fly through the sky like airplanes. Which is weird because clouds are full of so much water that they can easily weigh as much as a jumbo jet. So why don't they fall out of the sky? There's lots of different kinds of clouds, but in the most general, weathery terms, clouds are big fluffy piles of water vapor that live overhead. As warm, humid air rises through the lower atmosphere, it expands, cools, and some of it condenses into very tiny liquid droplets. And so a cloud is born. Just how that water vapor rises, though, depends on the type of cloud. If the wind pushes it up a mountain like it's on a ski jump, we might get lenticular clouds. Humid jet engine exhaust can make wispy cirrus clouds. But maybe the easiest cloud to understand is everyone's favorite fluff ball, cumulus. They're also the easiest ones to draw. It's a cloud. So how do you keep the weight of a hundred elephants in the air? Buoyancy. Warm air is less dense, so it rises, just like inside of a lava lamp. Cumulus clouds appear over dark pavement, fires, sunny hillsides, any source of warm updrafts. As the water vapor in that air is carried up, it cools, so its molecules slow down and some of them stick together, forming droplets that we can see. We still have an unanswered question, though. After the wind carries them away from the warm updraft, why don't clouds fall back down? because of condensation. You know how when sweat evaporates off your forehead you feel cooler? That's because water moving from liquid to gas takes some heat with it. Condensation is just the opposite. It releases heat. So as the water in a cloud condenses, it heats itself from the inside, staying aloft like a hot air balloon. Da Vinci called them bodies without surface, which is why we can't live on them. But maybe in them. Lieutenant Colonel William Rankin did just that. Accidentally, anyway. As he was piloting his fighter jet over the top of a massive cumulonimbus cloud, the engine caught on fire. He ejected and fell from 47,000 feet straight into a nine-mile tower of lightning, thunder, ice, rain, carried up on 70-mile-per-hour updrafts and barely conscious. He was suffering from frostbite, bloodied by the pressure change, bruised by hail and drowned by rain. What should have been a 10 minute parachute ride down to the ground instead took him 40 minutes. He was definitely not on cloud nine. He was, he was in it. In the 1896 edition of the International Cloud Atlas, Cumulonimbus, the world's tallest and most powerful clouds, were placed at entry number nine. Unlucky pilots aren't the only living things inside clouds. Scientists found that living airborne bacteria make up as much as 20% of cloud condensation nuclei. Not only are they home to airborne ecosystems, clouds are in some ways very much alive and evolving themselves. Just take a few minutes and stare up at a fluffy cumulus as its edges billow and die. The rain that falls from them will one day rise to become new clouds. It's a very circle of life. It might be because they're so alive that their names sound like biological species. Cirrocumulus stratiformis, cumulonimbus capillatus incus. Actually, those sound like Harry Potter spells. Undulatus aspiratus. The greatest cloud photo of all time wasn't taken looking up at the clouds, but looking down on them. When Apollo 17 astronauts brought this image back to Earth, it became the symbol of a new environmental movement demanding an appreciation of our fragile planet. 29% of its surface covered by land, 71% covered in liquid water, but so many clouds. There's a lot that scientists still don't know about clouds, but they are definitely important. And they look cool. Like Gavin Prater Penny says, they are nature's poetry writ large for all to see. I mean, what's a sunset without clouds? It's just a disappearing circle. Plain blue sky is just boring. Clouds are what puts the pale in this pale blue dot. I like that. I've got some homework for you this week. 
it's fun homework. Gavin Prater Penny is the founder of the Cloud Appreciation Society and the author of this book, The Cloud Spotter's Guide. This book will completely change the way you look at the sky. I can't even sit by the window on airplanes anymore because it's too overwhelming. Gavin wrote about a trick that I'm challenging all of you to do. Go outside and lie on your back so that you can look up and behind you at the clouds and they'll become the landscape and the ground becomes the sky. If you see anything cool, take a picture and let me know here. Now, I only scratched the surface of the cloud world today, but there's a link to this book down in the description. It might be the best book on clouds out there. And I've also included a link to the International Cloud Atlas so you can learn to identify all those puffy white things in the sky. And also a link to the video about Lieutenant Colonel William Rankin, the man who rode thunder. Thanks for watching and stay curious. Every night around sunset, they head out to eat and it is an unforgettable sight. Oh man, look at all these clouds. There's a, there's a stratus cloud and there's a, a nimbus cloud. Those are great. Oh, and a cumulonimbus, whoa, watch out for that one. <laughs> you guys are totally putting me in the clouds, right?